Hi kids, it's Heidi Voy, and this is my cat, Phoebe. And just like you, we're staying home these days. Now, if you're like me, you love getting outside and connecting with nature. And one of my favorite ways of doing that is by fishing. But the next time you head out to the water, you might want to watch out for tigers because the tiger trout is back in Connecticut. They've been missing for a couple of years, but now they're back by popular demand, and so we're really excited about it. Connecticut is home to millions of fish, but every year Mother Nature gets a helping hand from Quinnebog State Fish Hatchery in Plainfield. It is currently the largest state fish hatchery um, in Connecticut. It's one of the largest east of the Mississippi River. Uh, we currently produce about 682,000 trout a year. Brook trout, brown trout, rainbow trout, and uh, we brought back this year the tiger trout. Connecticut's fisheries division stopped breeding tiger trout for a couple years when money was tight. But now, thanks to the new trout stamp program, they have the budget to bring them back. And for fishing fans, that's exciting news. The tiger trout are really exciting for a few reasons. One, they're just beautiful. They have these cool stripes. They're called vermiculations that make them look sort of like a tiger. And they're also really aggressive, so they'll bite a lure and they'll fight a lot harder than your typical brown or rainbow trout whale. Tiger trout are a hybrid, a cross between two kinds of fish. They're very rare in the wild, so instead they're bred by biologists inside. Now these here are the parent fish of a tiger trout. You take a female brown trout and a male brook trout, spawn them together, and that's how you get the tiger trout. That is correct. Hatchery manager Brian Decker says it takes about 16 months for these feisty fish to grow from an egg to a catchable sized trout, 10 to 12 inches long. So this is where the life cycle begins, right? Yes, uh, this building is what we call the hatch house. Uh, these current uh, trays you see, these are what we call vertical tray incubators or heat stacks. And essentially, uh, we bring in eggs from our broodstock holding facility, and we'll put them into these trays. Uh, once the eggs hatch, we call them sack fry, and then we bring these sack fry into these six-foot uh, tanks. Uh, we'll put them in between 40 and 80,000 fish per tank. Once the fish hit about two and a half to three inches, we start moving them into a, another uh, building, what we call the intermediate rearing building. And then it's off to the big pools to finish growing until they're ready for release. These stocking trucks use special tanks to carry thousands of trout to rivers and streams, lakes and ponds all across the state. Now these are some of the 3,500 tiger trout that will be released into Connecticut waterways. And you can see why they're called tiger trout because of their markings, right? Yep, yep. they've got that vermiculated pattern. To me, they look more like a cheetah trout, but I don't think that has quite the same ring to it. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Whatever you call them, catching them can be educational. If you're going out fishing, you have to learn about the fish. You have to learn about what the fish are eating. You have to get in their head. You get outside. You learn to care about the aquatic resources in a way you might not if you weren't fishing. You become an advocate for the environment. And lots of fun. If you're looking for excitement, then you can get out and feeling that hook up, catching a big fish. There's really not much that's more exciting than that. And now that you've seen them up close, now's your turn to get out there and try your luck at taming a tiger. Now, if you're 16 or under, fishing is free for you, but your parents will need a fishing license. You can learn more at ct.gov slash D-E-E-P. Happy fishing!